Here we have a half mortise lock set. This is meant to be installed with one side exposed on the inside of the cabinet. I didn't like that look, so I'll show you how I converted it to a full mortise lock set. First, I removed some of the excess material on that plate that would normally be exposed. And then I drilled two countersunk holes in the top. This will allow us to fit the lock set into a full mortise on the front edge of the blanket chest. I'll do this on the router table. With a half inch spiral upcut bit tucked into the router, we'll move the box back and forth while bringing the router bit up into the workpiece with the foot pedal. We need a pretty deep mortise, almost two inches deep. So this is a pretty stable way to do it. I've added that heavy motor on top just to keep the box steady on the router table. I move the box back and forth and gradually cut the mortise. Here you can see how much bit we have exposed above the table and how deep that mortise had to be for the lock set. Now I need to make a shell reveal in the top edge of the board to receive the plate on the lock set. I'll do this with a chisel. Here you see the escutcheon. It's going to be mounted on the front of the blanket chest. We drill a three quarter inch hole and then after the lock set is installed we'll epoxy the escutcheon in place on the front of the blanket chest. Now it's time to mount the hinges. I've just clamped a board on the inside of the blanket chest so that the hinge butts up against it. I'll drill pilot holes and then screw the hinge in. To attach the lid, I've clamped a board along the back side of the chest and I'll use these triangles to hold the lid into position while I secure it with screws. The lid supports are extended in their natural state. So with the lid positioned at 90 degrees, it's easy to mark and drill pilot holes to secure the lid support. The last part of the lock set is the catch, which gets recessed in the front lip of the lid. I put it in place and then put some double sided tape on it and then close the lid. The catch is temporarily adhered to the lid in the proper position. I'll outline its position with a pencil and then remove the material underneath with a chisel in order to recess this catch into the lid. I'll drill pilot holes and secure it with screws. After sanding to 240 grit, it's time to apply the finish. Before I do, I wipe down the entire box with mineral spirits. The finish we'll be using is a three-step process. The first step is to apply an alcohol-based dye. This is a very pale dye and it just sets an undertone for the finish. We wipe this on quickly because the alcohol based dye dries quickly. The second step is to apply an oil based stain. We work this into the grain 
and then wipe off the excess almost immediately. Here you can see the alcohol-based dye going on the top. It's really a pale yellow, but it sets a nice warm undertone to the wood. For a top coat, we're going to be using a white bond, polyurethane, and a satin sheen. The inside of the box doesn't get any finish at all. In between top coats, I sand with 400 grit very lightly. As I'm applying the finish, I look into a light that helps me to detect any imperfections. After the finish is done, I'll drill the final holes to mount the handles on the side of the blanket chest. Well that does it for the blanket chest, and I hope I've inspired you to take on a project like this for yourself. Because in the end, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing you created a to beautiful, the rest of the videos handcrafted, in this series, and videos well built piece of furniture topics, that will last visit for generations. Visit and click on the videos link. You can even sign up to be notified when new videos become available.